Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm really thankful that you've decided to tune into Kidville today. And the reason that I'm thankful is because I'm just full of gratitude after thinking about all the things that people have done. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. So for example, it's like a shout out. If you see that someone's helped you, you want to thank them, you want to shout out, you want to tell them that you actually noticed what they did. So for example, I would say like, Shout out to my friend Kate who made this really cool background, the, uh, the, the bricks, and she's made a whole bunch of our sets for Kidville in the past. Shout out to Benny who makes, makes these videos for us every single week. And I want to shout out to Miss Melanie. She has been working really hard all week to make our double mask party and she does all kinds of things for Kidville. So those are some of the people that I wanted to thank and give a shout out to. And now I wanna show you something. So on these cards, I have things that we can be grateful for. So let's take a look what we have here. Our clothes. So I'm assuming that you have something to wear every day. Like it would be pretty bad if you had to go to the store and you had nothing on. I don't think that's allowed. And even if you have like hand-me-downs maybe from your, your sister or your cousin or something, you still have clothes to wear and you're well-dressed, taken care of. Your parents or your guardians clothe you, right? So that's something to be grateful for. Let's see the next one. Aw, your family. Now, you might have a different household. Everyone's family looks different, the people that you live with, but these are the people that care about you, that take care of you. Uh, the house doesn't matter, right? You might even have two houses, but your family is the people who are going to be there for you. Next one is, oh, this is a good one, right? Food, I had the most amazing burger and fries at the works the other day. It had a ton of bacon, it was really good. And I've also been loving having bananas for breakfast. And it's really cool that God made so many different foods for us to enjoy. We could talk about it for hours, but he was really kind to, to create such delicious things and that people create really good, good things from what God made. So food is something that we have to be grateful for, then we don't have a growling stomach. This one is friends, right? So these guys look like they're having fun. I'm not sure if they're six feet apart, but hopefully close enough. And as we talked about in September, friendship is so important, right? We have to learn how to be a good friend so that we can uh, have good friends. And it might look a little different now than it usually does, right? If we're having to be distanced or you have friends that are virtual, but it's so important to have people that love you, you can have fun with, they've got your back. Friendship is an awesome thing to be grateful for. All right, what else do I have? This is a heart. And that says a couple things to me. Number one would be uh, people's love, right? You have people in your life that love you. And it also is about God's love, right? And how Jesus is in our heart when we believe in him and what he's done for us. He's really the only one that can make our hearts clean since he's paid for our sins, right? So the heart says a lot of things. It talks about love. What else do we have? Our home, okay? So this is a nice looking house. Everyone has a different looking house. Everyone has a different home. And uh, as long as you have like a roof over your head and a bed, you have a lot to be grateful for. That's a really awesome thing to take the time to thank God for. Um, what else do we have? We have, oh, look at this. A lovely hill and trees and sunshine and blue sky. Nature is something I know I've been really thankful for because even when everything else is closed, nature is not closed, right? We can still go outside, go for a walk, and enjoy what God has made outdoors, right? And my last thing I have to be thankful for, all right, which of you guys love your pets, right? Do you have real, maybe you don't even have your own pet, but you love animals. Um, I wanna know all about your pets. I know that they're really important to a lot of you. They're like a member of your family, right? So I know a lot of you guys are grateful for your pets. So look at all these awesome things. I want you to take a, a quick look, all right? Study the pictures because then I am going to uh, put them back to the front and I'm gonna ask you a couple memory questions, okay? So you've seen the pictures, you've considered all these different things that we can be thankful for. 
All right, so now let me ask you a memory skill testing question. In the picture of the friends, how many friends were in the picture? Do you remember? If you said four, you're right. That was an easy one. Now this one's a little trickier. How many family members, okay, how many members of the family were in the picture of the family? What do you think? Do you know? If you said one, two, three, four, five, six, then you're right. I counted the little dog. Okay, I'm going to do one more. What color was the apple in the food picture? I mean, it could be red, it could be green. In this case, it was a yellow apple. Super random, but I thought I would trick you. I, if you said yellow apple, I would be super impressed. So we want to remember to say thank you, to show our gratitude. Well, let's remember what God has done right now. We're going to sing and dance and praise God. So let's get on our feet. Took a breath, you had a plan for my every step. You promised to always be by my side. I believe that you are the way, you are the truth, you are the lie. So I sing this to you. You keep your promises every day. I will believe in everything that you say. Yeah, in the dark, I know you're making a way. Jesus, I will trust. the way you want, or the way you expect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but you know, and I know, that things don't always go the way you want, or expect. I have just one thing I want. I have just one thing. Hello? Ah! I have just one thing. <laughs> I have just one thing. I. I have just, I, I just, I just wanted to, wait a second, no, ah! I have just one thing I want, I just have one thing that, what else could possibly go, oh! Stop it, quit it! In today's story, we're going to learn
learn about the best time to have gratitude. I'll give you a hint. It's not always when... <clears throat> it's not always when things... Oh, come on! I'm not even using your microphone! Oh, I'll tell you later. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 18. Ilsa sighed as she trailed along behind her mom at the grocery store. Can I just go wait in the car? Mom handed Ilsa a tiny loaf of bread to put into the cart. You need to learn for yourself what you can eat. Nothing. I can't eat anything. Earlier that day, Ilsa had gotten the food sensitivity test results back from the allergist. No gluten, no dairy, no artificial colors or flavors. I don't even know what gluten is. It's in bread and pasta and crackers and a lot of other things. Ilsa grabbed the loaf of bread. And what's this? Gluten-free bread. It looks like cardboard. As they reached the dairy case, Ilsa spotted the new holiday display. Yes, they've got eggnog. She reached for a carton, but mom shook her head. Eggnog has dairy in it, hun. You can't have milk. Let's try this instead. Mom picked up a small carton and handed it to Ilsa. Soy nog? By the time they got home to unload groceries, Ilsa was miserable. You've got to be kidding. What about Sunday dinners? What about Aunt Ellen's stuffing and Grandma's rolls and pie and all the good stuff? We'll find options for you, I promise. Ilsa reached for her plastic pumpkin full of candy on the counter. She grabbed a mini candy bar and then stopped. A sinking feeling in her stomach. I can't eat any of this now, can I? I'm sorry, hun. When Ilsa opened her lunch bag at school the next day, she tried not to groan. A sun butter sandwich with gluten-free bread, a bunch of grapes, a few carrots, and some weird looking oatmeal cookies. Where's my string cheese? Oh, right. Ilsa couldn't bring herself to finish lunch. Her stomach still felt empty as she settled back into her seat at social studies, where their teacher, Mr. Mendel, dimmed the lights for a slideshow. One of the best ways to learn about other cultures is through something we all do every day. Any ideas what that might be? Like what we wear? <laughs> Actually, I'm talking about something we do at least three times a day. Ilsa raised her hand. Eat. We all eat. Bingo! A famous photographer took photos of families all across the world, along with the food that they eat in one week. I want you to pay attention to the details. This first family lives in Great Britain. The first photograph included a family from the United Kingdom. The overflowing table of food included cookies and pizza. Mmm, pizza. Here's a family in Southern Italy. The next image showed a family with three small children. The loaves of bread on the counter looked so fresh, Ilsa could practically smell the scent of baking bread. Ooh. This is Germany. The next image showed another table top-loaded with food, but Ilsa could only focus on the container full of ice cream front and center. Yet another thing she could no longer eat. Her stomach rumbled. Here's a family in Bhutan. It's a small country beside India. The next photo showed 12 people with a colorful display of vegetables, a large bag of rice, and a small amount of meat. Ilsa frowned. That's all they eat? It's what they have to work with. This next photograph is from the country of Chad in Central Africa. A family of six sat on the ground. In front of them, a tiny bag of grains, a small amount of beans, and a handful of vegetables. Wait, where's the rest of their food? That's it. For a whole week? Ilsa shook her head. That's just... Ilsa? What are you thinking? I guess... I knew that some people don't have the same things to eat that we do, or as much. It's just different, seeing it. The colorful photos haunted Ilsa for the rest of the afternoon. She was quiet as she took off her backpack in the kitchen at home. You want a snack, hon? I've got some trail mix. I'm good. 
Elsa pulled her lunch bag out of her backpack and opened it up. How was the gluten-free bread? It was okay, actually. I'm going to finish my sandwich now. Elsa took a bite of her sandwich and chewed. It wasn't like regular bread, but she could get used to it. What's that thing Grandma always says before dinner? What thing? I don't, before the prayer. It's the verse, like say thank you, whatever happens. Oh, um, it's from Thessalonians, I think. Mom checked her Bible app. Give thanks no matter what happens. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. Yeah, that. Ilsa smiled and took a bite out of one of the oatmeal cookies. Hey, these are really good. Thanks for making stuff I can eat. Ilsa knew it would take some time to adjust her new eating plan, but she was glad for the reminder that she still had a lot to be thankful for. When the Apostle Paul first started telling people about Jesus, he didn't always get applause. Instead, some people were mad at Paul and he spent a lot of time in jail just for saying what he believed. Probably not the way he wanted things to go. But listen to what Paul wrote. Give thanks no matter what happens. Did you hear that? No matter what happens, that means the best time to have gratitude is all the time when you get picked for the team, and when you don't get picked. When your mom buys your favorite cereal, and when your sister eats the last bowl. When you're in school, when you're out of school, even when you're quarantined in your house, there's always something to be grateful for, if you look hard enough. Here's a good place to start. Paul wrote, give thanks no matter what happens. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. Even when things don't go the way you want or expect, you can always be grateful that Jesus loves you and died for you. So the one thing to remember today is this. You always have something to be grateful for. So next time you talk to God, tell him you're grateful and not just when things go your way. Be grateful even when times are tough because God loves you and is there for you all the time. And that is why I have just one thing I want to say to you, God. Thank you! Huh. Yeah, well, I still thank you, God. Thank you! Bye! grateful is an important part of following Jesus because it's really cool when you think about what you have to be thankful for and when you choose to have gratitude it's it's like Jesus says that he will give us joy no matter what through all of life's up and downs it's not based on our circumstance but God gives us joy through everything because we choose to focus on what we have to be thankful for. So remember what Paul said in that verse that we heard in 1 Thessalonians, give thanks no matter what happens. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. So Jesus is the very beginning of it all. When you follow Jesus, you always have something to be grateful for. It's not based on our circumstances and our ups and downs, but it's because we know that we have Jesus and that he gives us joy through everything. So guys, say it with me. This is our bottom line for today. You always have something to be grateful for. Join me one, two, three. You always have something to be grateful for. Okay, I don't really know if you meant it. I'm gonna need you to say it a little bit louder. So let's try that again. One, two, three. You always have something to be grateful for. Always. So let's thank God together right now and just think about all that we have to be thankful for. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for creating us. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross and pay for our sins to give us life in you. Thank you that no matter what happens, we can pray to you and you can show us the joy that we have from following Jesus. I pray that you would give us joy no matter what we face in life. Help us to look around for all the things that we can be grateful for this week and that we would be able to show gratitude to uh, the reasons that we can be thankful. We love you in Jesus' name, amen. So when we talk to God, we, we don't just have to 
uh, talk about the things that we need, right? It's not just like, oh God, give me this or give me that. We want to also make sure that we thank him for the things that he's done and the things that he's given us, the people he's given us. So remember to always thank God. That's your, your go-to, your first thing you should do is to thank God for how awesome he is and what he's done for you. And when you do, your gratitude will turn to joy. So that's super exciting. I have a memory verse for you. We're starting a new month, so we have a new memory verse. And it talks about giving things to God. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. That's from Psalm 136, verse one. So we're giving thanks to the Lord, not because everything in our life is good all the time, but because he is good, because he's faithful to us, because his love will never fail. It's always gonna be with us forever. That's why we can give thanks. So let's start to memorize that. Practice your verse, check out your parent guide and your God time cards, your activities if you have our Southgate in a box. And as you go through this week, think about how good God is. Try to look out for the things that he's done, the things that he's doing and how much he loves you. So let's uh, be grateful this week and make sure to give a shout out to anyone that you see that has helped you. Have a great week. Where does gratitude start? With your words? Oh, uh, hold on one second. Hello? Oh, thanks. In your head? What about your heart? Being thankful includes all of those things, your heart, your head, and your words. But I think gratitude truly begins with your eyes. It starts with paying attention, stopping to see the people around you and all the other beautiful things in your life, like the way your dad buttered and cut your toes just the way you like it. That crossing guard standing in the pouring rain to make it safe for you to get to school. The way your kid brother can turn even cleaning your room into a party. Your fingerprints that God designed for you and no one else in the whole world. That amazing, breathtaking sunset on the way home from dance class. When you truly see these things, it changes your heart. The words bubble up in your mind and you can't help but say thank you. The more you remember to thank God and the people around you, the more others can see God at work in you. And that's why gratitude is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Feeling down, you pick me up. Sing. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. Oh, oh, oh. And even in the deepest, darkest night, you help me see. Sing it out now. Oh, oh, oh. I just want to say thank you for the way you love me. I want to say thank you for the way you love me. I just want to say thank you. Say thank you, just wanna say thank you
Every beat, beat. 